and warm welcome to join us for this edition of Fade in English News and I'm Abdul Ahad Mohammadi. Hundreds of demonstrators marched towards the palace of President Hamid Karzai in the capital Kabul on Friday as the first days of as the first day of protest erupted over the burning of copies of Holy Quran at the US base in Bagram. Police fired into the air to try to disperse the crowd of angry men throwing stones and chanting death to America and long life Islam after Friday prayers. Demonstrations also erupted in other parts of the country and in some places turned deadly. Afghans warned the United States to put those responsible on public trial. Meanwhile, NATO's top military commander says an investigation into this week's Holy Quran burning at the U.S. base in Bagram is pushing ahead and called on Afghans to be patient and exercise restraint. U.S. General John Allen said in a statement Friday that NATO and Afghan leaders are working together to ensure such an incident is not repeated. The U.S. has apologized for the warnings and said it was a mistake. The country has been wrecked by four days of violence that has claimed 13 lives, including two U.S. soldiers, or the warnings of the Muslim holy book. Pakistan's Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani on Friday urged leaders of the Afghan Taliban to enter direct peace negotiations with the Kabul government in a possible sign that Islamabad is stepping up its support for reconciliation in the neighboring country. Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Gilani said in a statement that it was his sincere hope that the Taliban and other groups respond to his appeal. Pakistan is critical to efforts to bring the Afghan Taliban Taliban to the negotiating table because of its historic, historical ties to the group. Gilani said Pakistan is prepared to do whatever it takes to help the Afghan reconciliation process succeed. The Committee to Protect Journalism, Journalist or CPJ is calling on Afghan authorities to fully investigate the murder of radio journalist Sadim Bahadurzai and bring those responsible to justice. In a statement, the media advocacy group said Bahadurzai, who worked for the Milmar radio station was found dead near his home in eastern Paktika province early on February 22. The CPJ said 21 journalists have been killed in Afghanistan since the U.S.-led invasion in 2001. It is said that police is investigating whether Bahadur's, Bahadur's, Bahadur says this was linked to a telephone call he received by an identified man who requested a meeting. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said Thursday that Pakistan was too important for Washington to turn its back on following talks with her Pakistani counterpart. Clinton and Hina Rabani Kerr discussed tackling violent extremism, supporting Afghan led reconciliation, and improving ties between Washington and Islamabad. Clinton said there would still be ups and downs in their relationship, but that neither side could afford to shun the other. Relations between Pakistan and the United States were severely damaged last year by a covered American raid that killed Al-Qaeda leader, a near strike that killed Pakistani soldiers near the Afghan border. Al-Shabaab's leadership and embrace the political roadmap and the fundamental rights and freedoms of all Somalis. At least four policemen were killed when suicide bombers blew themselves up in an attack on a police station in northwest Pakistan on Friday. Officials said the three attackers armed with hand grenades also wounded four other policemen in the assault on the station in the city of Peshawar near the Laos tribal belt, a stronghold of Taliban and Al-Qaeda linked militants. The attack came a day after a car bomb ripped through a bus station, killing at least 30 people and wounding a dozen more on the outskirts of Peshawar.
The United Nations and the Arab League have appointed Kofi Annan, a former head of the World Body, to act as a joint special envoy in Syria as international representatives gathered in Tunisia to discuss measures to end the escalating violence in the country. The UN Secretary General and head of the Arab League announced the appointment late on Thursday. Prior to the meeting, the US, European and Arab nations have crafted a stern warning to Assad calling on him to agree to an immediate ceasefire and allow humanitarian aid into areas hardest hit by his regime's crackdown. Global leaders have called for urgent action on Somalia, warning that the world will pay, will, will pay the price for failing to help the country tackle its political instability, civil war and pirates. Speaking at this conference in London, along with a dozen other leaders on Thursday, David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, said the problem in Somalia is a complex jigsaw puzzle where every piece has to be put into place. It is all about the patient work of helping the Somali people to rebuild their country from bottom up, he added. And that's all for now. Thanks for being with us.